or using both ship's derricks to unload a long column from a heavy lift vessel to shore. To pass the head of the column under the boom of the near crane requires the rear crane to first swing counterclockwise, so it has to go out in this direction. Noting the clearance of the load to the boom, so you've got to be careful there. Let's examine the steps necessary to transfer this vessel from location 1 to location 2. You first want to get the head of the vessel under the boom of crane A, so it has to pass around this path here. The vessel has to be moved to the right to allow this to happen, so crane B has to first swing in this direction as crane A swings in that direction. Crane A takes the lead and slews counterclockwise or swings counterclockwise, while crane B also swings counterclockwise. Crane A booms back to minimum radius to minimize the swing required of crane B. This is about the point, as shown here, this attitude here, where crane B has to start swinging clockwise. Crane A continues to swing counterclockwise and increase radius, while crane B swings clockwise. Crane B then moves back to minimum radius as this is happening to minimize the swing required of crane A. The next phase requires passing the tail of the vessel under the boom of crane B. So we've now got to get the tail round and under the boom here. For the head of the vessel has to be moved to the left past the center of crane A. So we have to actually continue over in this direction. This is about the approximate extreme of the leftward move. Now you can pass the tail completely around crane B along this path. You can start to push the radius out and you can let the head come back again on crane A. So here we see it. Crane B is now taking the lead and continues to swing clockwise while crane A follows. Crane B continues to swing clockwise an increased radius, crane A follows swinging clockwise until the vessel is now laid out parallel to the cranes. The concern in this type of operation, in which coordinated swinging and booming up and down is required, particularly when using mobile cranes, is the possibility of side loading the crane booms. For that reason, it's generally advisable to plan to stay within 75% of the crane's rate of capacity when using mobile cranes to perform this kind of lift.